Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a, a great weekend. Was it a good weekend? I hope so because uh, this is good times we're living in. Good times. And I just, uh, my sister came over the house the other day and, and it was a funny thing because uh, I was showing, I, I have a toolbox, believe it or not, in my, my living room and also a, a lathe. But uh, I was showing my sister some of the, you know, I said, you know, she don't really see the channel, but uh, I opened up the drawer and I said, this is some of the stuff I, and she she <laughs> looked at this stuff and she said, oh, wow, look at this. Of all the beautiful tools I got, she picked out a tool you wouldn't believe. So that's what gave me inspiration to come down here today and start something a little bit, uh, I want to do something a little different today. Looking forward to this project. Uh, I have high hopes and uh, let's get right to it. And this is it. This is the tool of all the beautiful restored tools I have upstairs. This is the one she takes and she says, wow, that is beautiful. And I, I had to laugh. I was like, you know, well, Lynn, that's not a restored tool. I made that tool from scratch. But I'm telling you, that's why I tell you, you know, these guys that have buckets of, even if they're collectible, if they're like patinaed up in rusty tools, you know, if God forbid something happens to you, those things are going to the, the scrapyard. <laughs> but if you have something that's attractive, even if they're not going to use it, it's, it is, it's attractive. And, and so I said, you know what? I feel like making a screwdriver today. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, I like to fabricate stuff every once in a while. So here's what we have. We have a uh, piece of Delrin, a uh, piece of aluminum. We have some vintage screwdriver shafts but you can use any kind of screwdriver shaft but we'll we'll pull out these are a new old stock we'll pull out one of these phillips screwdriver shafts and i drew up a couple ideas of how i want now it to anytime look. you want to just draw something out it's always a good idea to put it on paper because you could see right there when you put it on paper you can see the problems you're going to have and i'll show you why um i wanted something that's ergonomic i have a bunch of screwdrivers i like but you know I'll show you why when I complete it, but uh, I wanted the back to be of Delrin, the back here. I wanted to have a, a, a little swirl down here that, you know, when your fingers press down. So this has to be just like much of these curves, you know, these curves on the bottom of most screwdrivers. It's so that you can, when you have a high torque situation, your thumb and forefinger could go there and press it, you know. So that's what I want there. I want it to cone down to the front. Uh, but w again, when I was doing it on paper, I realized that Delrin isn't really good at, at holding glue. Okay. Delrin is it's So we're going to kind of press fit the thing in there with a little bit of a uh, glue to hold it. But, uh, a glue, a glue really, and Delrin, it's okay, but it's not a great uh, mix. So what I, ex I'll extend this part here, this shaft, I'll extend out. And I will kind of put a knurling on it to grip it and make it a press fit. So when we press it in, and another thing I thought about is um, I'll take the screwdriver and I will pin it into this aluminum piece that we're going to make. So if I could make this piece here, we can have a lot of fun with something like that. So let's do that now. Now, one of the biggest uh, challenges of machining anything is to figure out in what order you're going to do what operation. Now, here you can see the reason we did this front part first is so we can flip it around and replace it into the chuck to turn the other side. Now, here you could see that the screwdriver bit isn't indeed NOS. This one, it's kind of beat up, and we'll address the tip, and now's the time you want to take it to the belt sander and clean it up while it's out.
Now it's important every once in a while to take it out of the lathe, put it in your hand and say, is this the, what, what I feel? See, I keep wanting to get this lip because when you push down with your hand, when you're getting some torque, you not only push on the base, but you also a lot of times push on this part here. So I'm, I'm, every time I do it, I say, I just want a little bit more grip. I want a little bit more thinner in here and uh, this I'll smooth out. So that's how you prototype something. And it'd be nice if I could cast these. This would make a perfect screwdriver kit. That's why you just put a little handle on here and you'll see where I'm going with this. Uh, but I'm having a lot of fun, even though I had to take my lathe apart to adjust the uh, belt. So I took about an hour to do that, but everything's going good. Now, after we trim it to length, we JB welded everything and left it in the lathe overnight to set up. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this screwdriver looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. I have to tell you something. I can't tell you how satisfying this is to do this. And, and it's only a screwdriver, you know, but it just, this is, is just uh, it's so nice. <laughs> I can't tell you how nice this came out. Okay, we used an old screwdriver. It wasn't new old stock, but we, uh, we reground the tip. So you could use any screwdriver. You can pluck that out of an old acetate handle and have some fun, make your own. Did all this by hand on the lathe. You know, these are all contour curves. They're a little difficult. You see how that seam meets where the aluminum meets the Delrin? Uh, we knurled a little here, knurled a little here. And uh, look at this. Look when it goes into your hand. Look at this. It's just, I'm telling you, this is the most beautiful screwdriver. And I'll tell you what, what gave me somewhat inspiration for this was this Vessel screwdriver. Vessel's made in Japan. They're beautiful screwdrivers. Uh, this one here, it, it looks goofy. But boy, is this a comfortable screwdriver. And, you know, I recently just saw this again. Joe's shop, my buddy Joe, had this. You know, I, I mentioned this a while ago. Joe bought it, and he was he's happy with it. And I'm telling you, as goofy as this screwdriver looks, it is such a, uh, you know, a beautiful screwdriver to use. But that had somewhat of an inspiration. But this one here, uh, oh, I can't tell you. It is just fantastic. And I just love the way it looks. Now... If I could get this little piece here that I made, I'd like to prototype that and make a bunch of these, you know, because I think everybody would like one of these, right? I mean, it's just beautiful with the Delrin and the, and you could do it all different styles. Let me try it out and see how it works. Okay, here we are just as to test it out here. And you could see that this has such a nice feeling because your, your finger could wrap around this front part. Your thumb presses here and your palm is pressing on the back here. And it is just... It's super, super comfortable, very easy to control. Uh, I'm telling you, it is lovely. And I think, uh, you know, you could grip it back here. There's so many different ways you can grip this screwdriver and it has the knurling. I just, I think it's a great design. Now, I don't re recommend a lot of products, but I have to tell you, this one is a really comfortable. But the only thing, I, there's a couple things that I'm not, cre first of all, this rubber, you know, that new rubber that they're making today just gets dirty like crazy and it always looks you know dirty and and i'm usually work clean with this screwdriver so i don't know how it picks up that kind of dirt secondly i'm not crazy this is the model number by the way 220 and you can see here it's a p1 times 75 but uh, i'm not crazy that they put the barcode <laughs> i think that just doesn't look too appealing but other than that the one thing it does have an anti-roll technology which mine doesn't have and this will roll, you know, if you put on a surface that's not level where that's what these have. But, so if you don't have one of these, pick it up. I really think you'll enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if you do have one, how you like it. And uh, this is this one's in the can. My buddy Dean Collins in the house. Okay, next up, let's see if we can knock out a quick fix and a restoration of an old screwdriver. Let's get right okay, to that. Okay, next up, we've all seen these before. I did a couple on the channel, but I find them interesting. I always do when I pick them up, especially if they're in decent shape. This one was in good shape, you know, look, usually you don't see forgings that tight with these type of screwdrivers, right? But it's got its own issues here. Um, 
First of all, it's got, you know, little, you, typical dings and dents and things like that around the top is mashed up. And But here, look at this. It's bent. You see that? It's bent. Now, what kind of force did you put on this? These things are hard to bend. So we're going to have to put this on the dake. We're going to clean it up. We're going to try and address. The tip has also got a weird bevel to it. It's almost like somebody's using this. I don't know what was going on with this thing. Let's have some fun with it. That's what this is all okay, about. Okay, everybody's favorite, the dake. Let's check out the setup. Okay, we position the screwdriver under here. We've got a piece of wood. It's going to compress the wood. We know that. We're going to hold this side. And we want to see how much force if it can. Okay, you can see that. It is really compressing that wood out down. I'll give it some more. I'm trying to look through the viewfinder. See, i got to go a little bit more. Okay, we'll bring it up and take a look at it. Okay, let's see how that looks. Do. Okay, well, I don't know. Did we go the other? Let's try it this way. I think we went the other way. Okay. Don't tell me that this ain't going. Let's take a look at that now. Okay, it's getting straighter. Okay, we're able to straighten it out. It's the grind that's off. That's what makes it look like it's crooked. We'll straighten that out when we do some grind. But that is, uh, that looks good. So let's let's hit it now with the grind of, and we'll uh, wire brush the inside. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this screwdriver looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Uh, this is a Herbrand. They called it their farm and heavy duty screwdriver. You can see the H there in the square or diamond as you would call it. And uh, that's Herbrand. Now, like I said, these have become quite collectible. I don't know why, um, but you can see what we did here. We straightened it out. It's nice and straight now. Uh, we gave it a little clean up. And I have to tell you something. I don't usually see these in, in as good of condition with tight grain forgings. So I left this one colorless and just polished the edges. I mean, when, when look at that. When you put this in your hand now, I know it's still, you know, clunky and it's still an unusual screwdriver. But because the polished edges all here and all the, the polished shaft and... Uh, the tip is nice. It just feels so much better and, and it really does look like a classic Screwdriver doesn't it and that slight off gray from the factory along with the chrome edges. I think is just a I Just think it's a classic look. What do you think? Okay, so in closing today was a double screwdriver Monday We did one fabricated from scratch and the other one Restored from uh, and it wasn't that bad. Just need a little bit of straightening out and cleaning up uh, so it's fun projects today. I hope you enjoyed them. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.